Yes, now you can replicate any successful app using AI. So do it and then just stare at it. Recently, I've came across a post on X where the author was claiming you can easily start making $200,000 per month by simply replicating a successful app like Reface using Cursor and then he even suggested to use the same strategy Reface used in 2021 to make your clone go viral. The obvious problem is it's 2025 and back then in 2021 when Reface launched the face swapping with AI was something novel and exciting and now social media is overwhelmed with AI generated content. I keep seeing narratives like this and honestly they are misleading. Out of curiosity I've tried to find some real examples of successful wipe coded apps. I searched on Google and Reddit, I even asked GPT-5, Claude and Perplexity. I couldn't find in even three real solid examples. Building was never a bottleneck. Finding the right problem to solve, coming up with a relevant solution, acquiring users, those were. Even iconic startups spent years struggling before they became successful. It takes years of eating glass to win in this game. There is this cool article by Lenny Rochitsky where he spoke with founders of iconic startups like Figma, Notion, Ramp, Canva and others and here is what he found. The medium time from an idea to a feeling product market fit among these famous startups was around two years. To get from a working product to a product market fit typically took from 9 to 18 months. For companies like Figma, Airtable and Slack it took 4 plus years to find their product market fit. And those were successful startups. Most projects die right after the MVP stage, never experiencing a single pain customer. The idea of simply replicating existing successful apps doesn't work either. These companies have modes, defensible edges like network effects, talented teams, proprietary data, switching costs, brand trust, etc. Take Lovable as an example. They famously built their first product within a single weekend. Since then, clones pop up almost weekly, yet nobody hears about them. Lovable still remains a leader in their category thanks to network effects. Yes, we also can argue that vibe coding as a movement is still very young and we just need to give it more time to see more examples of successful wipe coded apps. And sure, not every successful wipe coder is public about their story, but I believe if it was easy to wipe code these apps, we would have seen plenty of successful wins by now. It's a strange moment. While AI made it very simple to create software, it also made it brutally competitive as anyone can do it now. Another reason why I think we don't see many examples of successful wipe coded apps is that in my humble opinion traditional software as a use case is slowly dying unless it pivots into new agentic use cases that solve old problems in more efficient ways. Old SaaS and marketplace models that still follow the rules of pre-LLM era is unlikely to thrive in 2025 and beyond. That's why I never understood this excitement of normal people becoming capable of vibe coding target ideas like trying to create a new Facebook or general CRM in 2025. By the way, I recently recorded a video on this topic so if you want to learn more about the agentic software I will leave a link to the video in the description. I also believe that AI agents are on the horizon and once they become mainstream they won't need to navigate through classic interfaces at all. There have been a, a number of consumer software CEOs like when I hang out with them or whatever they're like how are we gonna keep doing what we do when the agents take over? The paradigm shift is so profound that the idea that you would visit a web page goes away and you're just in a chat dialogue. Yeah, you, know, you have an agent yeah. that's just taking care of your flights for you. Now I would like to talk about where I think wipe coding is actually useful. To start with, I think it's obviously validating new product ideas. For example, YC-backed startups like Airweave and Bond use Lovable to create the first version of their products. However, Y Combinator didn't accept these startups just because they were able to create these prototypes with Lovable. YC normally bet on startup founders, and Lovable was just a tool that helped them to iterate quickly. Most likely, these prototypes will just get thrown out. Success still comes from talking to users, identifying the right insights, 
making the right strategy moves, etc. And the process of finding product market fit is brutal. And vibe coding is very helpful as it helps you to test your ideas very quickly and move fast. Another use case where I think vibe coding can make a significant impact is launching initiatives inside existing large organizations. The larger the organization, the heavier the bureaucracy and the slower the teams are. With vibe coding, a single product manager with an idea can launch it without waiting for engineering resources. That's how a Brazilian startup Qconcurses added additional $3 million to their annual recurring revenue by implementing AI-powered tutor on the top of their existing educational platform. Hey, thank you for watching until now. We are not finished yet, but I just wanted to take a moment to briefly introduce myself. My name is Volo, I'm a founder of Vimec MVP, where for the last five years we've been helping startup founders build MVPs quickly. Now I'm launching my NoBS community, where ambitious entrepreneurs, builders and vibe coders gather together to share their struggles, receive advice, discuss real case studies of what others are building with AI. I will be also sharing exclusive content there. If you are interested to reserve your spot, you can go to vmakemvp.com slash community. See you there. I would like to end this video with some positivity. Even though I sound skeptical, my goal isn't to discourage you from building products with AI. In fact, I would like to feature two interesting projects that I found created using these vibe coding tools. The first project that I found is biographystudio.ai, which is an AI voice-based biography generation tool created using Replit by Brad Lindenberg. Users share their memories via voice about a figure, a friend, family member, or themselves, and the platform generates their story in the form of a written book, audiobook, or a podcast. It significantly reduces the time and cost to create a biography and helps someone to preserve one's life story. The second project that I found is codeguide.dev. Created by CJ Zafir using Cursor, Codeguide helps AI coded projects to automate their documentation process. CJ set himself a challenge to build 12 startups within 12 months and shared his journey on X. This strategy of building in public built him an audience. When he finally hit the right product idea, it finally clicked. Even given the complexity of today's startup landscape, I'm really excited about building new products using AI. Projects like Cluely, Lovable, Artisan, Kyle AI, Calorie Tracking App, Proof that today you can be nobody, but tomorrow a tech rockstar if you catch the right AI wave. Vibe coding gives you an edge, but only if you stay grounded, focused on real user problems, think about your mode and build from there. To sum up, vibe coding is exciting, but it doesn't change the startup fundamentals. Building was never a bottleneck. The hardest things were always talking to users, finding the right problems to solve, Grinding towards your product market fit. Tools like Lovable, Replit, Cursor make iterations easier, but they don't create for you modes and customers. That's why the narrative of wipe coding your way towards 200k per month is seductive but misleading. That's it for today, guys. My name is Volo. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to this channel, like, share your thoughts on comments, and see you soon.